Hello everyone, I am Sammy, your devoted manga otaku, and welcome to my manga space. Now before I jump into things, I actually forgot to film an intro for this video, so I'm going to quickly do that now. <laughs> now today, I'm taking you folks book shopping with me. I visited a huge Indigo bookstore while I was on vacation, and I ended up buying quite a few manga. Quite a few more than I anticipated, but no regrets. <laughs> I'll be hauling everything I bought as well as some other books that I just couldn't wait to haul and unbox. Now, a reminder if you'd rather dive right into the haul, I always include timestamps in all of my videos, so feel free to jump around. And with that, I invite you to grab a coffee or other beverage of your choice, and let's go manga shopping! <laughs> to bring my manga spreadsheets with me because I do suffer from goldfish brain. <laughs> Let me know if you would like a video on how I organize my collection through these spreadsheets. They're actually quite handy. <laughs> Whenever I visit an indigo store, I always look at all of their stuff. It's just so fancy, but I never buy anything because I'm poor. <laughs> So now that I've made it to the manga section, I just grabbed my list and just started collecting the manga off of it. Uh, the first one was this volume of Apothecary Diaries. It looks so beautiful. The artwork is so gorgeous and super detailed. I was actually quite impressed with the manga section at this store. It stretches along an entire back wall and it's probably the biggest selection I've ever seen at one of these indigo stores. So that was really cool. volume of Witch Hat Atelier, but I forced myself to put it back because I haven't read any of this series yet. And to be honest, I was kind of proud of myself because the cover was freaking stunning. <music> As you can see, I found volume 5 of A Sign of Affection. I do own it already, I just haven't hauled it yet, which is the story of my life. <laughs> I've heard good things about Requiem of a Rose King. I didn't realize it was by the same mangaka who wrote Ottoman. I didn't like Ottoman, but this doesn't look as saccharine as that series. I've 
heard of this manga before, but at first glance, Mizuno and Chayama sounds like a Romeo and Juliet type story. I love the cover, I love the art style, but after looking on Goodreads, it does have mixed reviews, so I need to look into it a little bit more before picking it up. If you have read this, I'd love to know if it's something that you recommend. ended up taking a little walk through the graphic novel section and I found this graphic novel called Lore Olympus. I think there's two volumes out at the moment. These books are stunning. I love the art style. They look gorgeous. And I believe it is about the love story between Hades and Persephone, which is something that really interests me. I love Greek mythology. So I think I'm going to be looking at investing in this series. I've heard great things about Grand Blue Dreaming, but I don't know anything about it. I just thought the back cover looked hilarious. If this is something that you've read or recommend, please let me know in the comment section. Days on Fest is another manga that I've heard really great things about. I think the art style for this looks really cute and the premise is really unique because you follow characters at musical festivals. I didn't end up picking it up though, but maybe I should have. Kaguya Sama, Love is War, better get a box set. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> And that was my little shopping adventure so let's just jump right into the haul i hope you guys enjoyed my little shopping vlog we kind of have a mixture of both manga i bought online and manga i bought while on vacation and i thought oof, <laughs> that i would start with this bag and we're just going to start pulling manga out but first i have to show you guys this adorable book sleeve that i bought i'm always bringing books with me whenever i'm running errands or when waiting for my kids and i thought this would provide really good protection it is covered with adorable cats it's padded and it's soft on the inside it's also water resistant, which is really great. And yeah, I've dropped books in the snow before and it's not a fun time. I'm definitely going to be getting a lot of use out of this. Okay, just for like convenience, I'm going to put this back down. And the first book that I'm pulling out is I Want to Be a Wall by Hanami Shiro Shirono. 
and this is published by Yen Press and it is rated older teen. So I was following this manga months before it was released. I added it to my wish list because I was interested in the premise and I'm thrilled to finally own the physical copy. I Want to Be a Wall is a Jose slice of life manga centering around a marriage of convenience between an asexual and a romantic BL fan and a gay man who's in love with his straight childhood best friend. After marrying in order to keep up appearances and mask their true natures, the couple strive to create a healthy and successful companionship. I think the art looks really cute and it just sounds like a very lighthearted story. Plus, I heard it has some really funny moments too. I'm really looking forward to reading a manga with an asexual and aromantic main protagonist. And then we have Cherry Magic. 30 Years of Virginity Can Make You a Wizard and this is volume 4. It's by Yu Toyota. It is published by Square Enix and it is rated mature. <laughs> so this is an ongoing yaoi series. I think there's seven or eight volumes released in Japan so far. And even though I haven't started the series yet, I keep buying volumes because I've heard really amazing things about it. Essentially, it's an office romance centering around a 30-year-old virgin named Adachi who discovers that he suddenly gained a magical ability allowing him to read the thoughts of the people he touches. Using this power, he learns that his handsome and successful co-worker Kurosawa has feelings for him. The premise sounds amusing and the artwork looks really nice. Hopefully I can get to this soon. I also have to read Candy Color Paradox and at some point I also have to read I Hear the Sunspot. Basically, I just need to read more of my yaoi titles. <laughs> and then we have volumes one and two of Daily Report about my Wish Senpai story and art by Maka Mochida. And that's what the covers look like. They are super cute. <laughs> These are both published by Seven Seas Entertainment and they are rated 13 plus. I believe this series is completed, so there's just the two volumes. And the main reason that I bought it is because the covers give me Kiki's delivery service vibes. <laughs> Admittedly, I don't know much about the story. I think it centers around an office romance with the female lead also being a witch. The back of the first volume says this office couple has sparks literally flying. <laughs> it's classified as a rom-com so I expect it to be cute, I expect it to make me laugh, and I've heard a ton of praise for this short little series. So I'm really hoping I can read it soon. October is just around the corner, so reading a witchy manga would be a great choice for my TBR. We shall see. And then we have volume one of Monster. This is the perfect edition. This is by Naoki Urasawa. It is published by Viz Media and it is rated older teen. This is another manga series I know very little about and it was kind of an impulse buy. I bought this partially because everyone owns it and I have yet to hear a negative review. All I know is that this is a horror mystery series following a surgeon? <laughs> We love blindly buying manga on this channel. I probably won't start this series until I have a few more volumes and I'm not entirely sure when I'll pick up more because they are on the pricier side. I think they're about $26 or $27 Canadian each. But then on the other hand, these are omnibuses, so you're getting a couple volumes with your purchase. Everything considered, I'm happy I bought this and I plan on collecting more in the future. And then we have volumes two and three of Sensei's Pious Lie. I just love the covers of this series. They look really good. <laughs> These are by Akane Torikai, 
and they are definitely rated 18 plus and they are published by Kodansha. Now, I didn't actually buy these while I was shopping. I ended up unboxing and reading these as they arrived because I read the first volume back in June and it was just so good and so compelling that I couldn't resist. <laughs> I'll be talking about my thoughts in my wrap up, but essentially this is a very heavy series about sexual violence and how it affects people. Additionally, it touches on the relationships between victims and their abusers while also exploring other problematic romances and relationships. It's very dramatic and uncomfortable, but I think it's well written and the art, especially the facial expressions, remind me of Shuzo Oshimi's art style. Trigger warnings for rape, sexual and physical assault, blackmail, emotional abuse, and incest. Like I said, it is a very heavy series, but it's good if you like reading these kinds of stories. Okay, so we're gonna take a break from the manga bag and we're actually going to unbox a manga. So we have volume 11 of Living Room Matsunaga-san. This is by Keiko Iwashita. This is published by Kodansha and it is rated 16 plus. Looks like I have a little bit of damage on the spine, which makes me sad. To the people who have subscribed recently, you might not know this, but Living Room Matsunaga-san is one of my favorite shoujo series. I haven't read the 10th volume yet. I've been waiting for this finale so I could read them back to back, and I'll probably reread the 9th volume as well just to really draw out the ending. <laughs> Living Room Matsunaga-san is just a really good age gap romance slash coming of age story. There is so much depth to the characters and watching them support and communicate with each other, it just fills my heart with so much joy and love. Iwashita Sensei's art style is incredible. Her work is so clean and expressive and her character designs are very modern. I really want to do something special for this series, like maybe film a small reading vlog or do a full series review. I'm not sure yet, but anyways, if you haven't read this yet, you really need to. And if you're on the fence, I recommend you check out my spoiler-free review of the first five volumes. It might help you decide if this manga is right for you. Okay, so now I am going to be hauling volume one of Summertime Rendering. And we're also going to unbox volume two. Summertime Rendering is published by Udon Entertainment, which I don't know if I own any of the manga from that publishing company, so that's really cool. And this is by Yasuki Tanaka, and it's rated mature. When it comes to this series, I've purposely kept myself in the dark regarding the storyline. All I know is that it's a mystery horror and it's completed at 13 volumes. I'm very curious about what kind of horror is featured in this series. I know it includes supernatural elements, but the covers, they look harmless and they don't really indicate what you're getting into, which makes me very curious. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to checking it out and I'm thrilled to have another horror series on my shelves. And then we have this little guy. This is, the two of them are pretty much like this. This is volume one by Taka, Takashi Aikida. 
This is published by Seven Seas Entertainment and it's rated 15 plus or older teen. This is another series that I was following before it was released and I was first drawn to it because of the cover. I love the soft and fluffy art style. It looks very cozy. <laughs> this is an adult romance series about two adult women living together and what their day-to-day -day interactions look like. I'm not sure if these women have come out as gay and in a relationship or if they're just pretending to be roommates. Either way, I don't expect very much tension or drama. I get the impression that this is just a really cute, queer, slice of life story and having these kinds of books is really great when you want to read something wholesome. And then we have volume two of A Galaxy Next Door by Guido Amagakure. This is published by Kodansha and it is rated older teen. My daughter bought me the first volume of this rom-com shoujo for Mother's Day and I thought I'd buy another volume just so that I can thoroughly explore this series. <laughs> the narrative follows an orphan named Ichiro who is working as a mangaka in order to take care of his younger siblings. He's really struggling with his deadlines when a very competent but strange woman named Shiori starts working for him. However, due to some unusual circumstances, Shiori declares herself married to Ichiro and his life is suddenly turned upside down. The reviews on Goodreads are kind of mixed, but I think the art is really pretty and I'm truly intrigued by this very odd premise. I've had a lot of luck with new shoujo this year and this series sounds promising. And then we have volume two of Moriarty the Patriot. This is by Ryo Ryosuke Takauchi. The art is by Hi Hikaru Miyoshi and it's based off the works of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. This is rated older teen and it's published by Viz Media. The first volume of this historical manga series was another manga gifted to me on Mother's Day, but it was my husband that gave it to me. By the way, if you want to see me unwrapping the manga I received on Mother's Day, I'll leave a card on the screen and link in the description. It was a lot of fun. But anyways, <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Sherlock Holmes especially the TV series starring Bandicoot Cumberpants. So collecting a manga about Sherlock's nemesis is right up my alley. I think the art style looks great. I have heard only good things about this series on both Instagram and Goodreads, and I'm excited to be collecting another shonen. I don't have a lot of shonen in my collection, so yeah, really looking forward to this, and I think my husband is as well because he's also a Sherlock Holmes fan. And then we have volume two of Kaiju number eight, and I'm also going to unbox volume one. I just love these covers. I think they look so cool. <laughs> ah, it looks like this is a staff pick. Cannot read the handwriting. I think it says <laughs> Harlan. I hope it says Harlan. It kind of looks like it says hard on, <laughs> but that can't be right, right? That can't be right. <laughs> what do you guys think this says? Let me know in the comment section. <laughs> H A R. L D O N Harlden Harlden maybe I'm not sure. Anyways, Kaiju number eight story and art by Naoya Matsumoto. These are published by Viz Media and they are rated teen. Kaiju number eight is a science fiction fantasy adventure series that Instagram made me buy. 
I've heard so many good things by so many people, so I couldn't help but buy a couple volumes and give it a good shot. I don't know much about this series. I know a few odd things, like the MC is in their 30s, which is kind of neat since most shonen feature children or young adults as their lead characters. It's cool to see my age group represented. <laughs> Besides the reviews, it was the covers and the art style that drew me to this series. I just think it looks really awesome. <laughs> I'm going to hold off buying any more volumes though until I've read these, but I'm actually pretty confident that I'm going to like it. And then we have volumes 11, volume 12, volume 10 <laughs> of Perfect World and these are by Rai Aruga. They are published by Kodansha and I believe they're rated 16 plus. Oh, these look beautiful. So I am actually really thrilled to be hauling these last few volumes of Perfect World because I've read up to volume 8 but decided to hold off reading the rest of the series as I wanted to binge the ending. Perfect World is a romantic drama series chronicling the realistic struggles and emotional journeys of two individuals, one who is able-bodied and the other whose disability requires them to use a wheelchair. I'm Hoping to read these right away because I'm really invested in the characters and their relationship. It's been a beautiful, albeit frustrating and heart-wrenching ride so far. The characters are forced to overcome so many obstacles, but I'm hopeful that we'll be getting some happier moments and possibly a happily ever after in these last volumes. And then we have volume six of Mashal Magic and Muscles by Hajime Komoto. This is, I believe this is rated teen? Yes. And this is published by Viz Media. So I had to pick this up while I was shopping because my husband and I have both been enjoying this series and talking about it with him has been an absolute joy. <laughs> if you want to hear my spoiler free thoughts on the first three volumes, I'll leave a link in the description and card on the screen. But essentially, this is a shonen story about a boy named Mash who was abandoned as a baby because he was born without magical powers, which is punishable by death. Kind of harsh. <laughs> His adopted father secretly raised Mash and used weight training and strict workout routines to train Mash and offset his lack of magic. After his secret is threatened, Mash has to put his training to the test and succeed at a prestigious magical academy using only his muscles to imitate magical abilities. This is a witty and entertaining parody of Harry Potter crossed with One Punch Man. It's been an enjoyable read and I highly recommend this to both Harry Potter fans and shonen fans alike. And then we have volume 7 of If I Could Reach You and I actually have another volume to unbox. <laughs> volume 6. I really like the cover of volume 6. It's so pretty. The art in general in this series is really pretty. <laughs> now, I'm really excited to be hauling these books. For one, these are the last two volumes in the series, and completing a series is always a magical feeling. And two, I recently read the first volume in my latest reading vlog, and I really liked it. This is a Yuri story centering around a high school girl who's in love with her brother's wife. 
and because her parents recently divorced, she's forced to live with the newlyweds. So far, it's been a really miserable time for the main character. She's in a very tricky position and I'm eager to find out how she's going to navigate this possibly messy situation. So yeah, love the art style. I love the story so far. Hopefully I can get to these soon. And then we have volume three of Play It Cool Guys by Kokune Nata. And this is published by Yen Press and it is rated teen. To be honest, I'm not really sure why I haven't read this slice of life series yet. I don't really have a good excuse. <laughs> Supposedly, it's a very cute comedy about these boys who look calm, cool, and collected from an outsider's perspective, but they're actually kind of clumsy and dorky. The books are pretty small, so it'd be a quick read. The manga is well drawn and fully colored, which is so freaking cool. And this series has raving reviews. Again, I'm not really sure why I haven't read this yet. And I think it's probably time I added it to my TBR. And we are getting close to the end here, but we have volume five of the Apothecary Diaries. This is by, well, story by Natsu Hayuga, art by Nico Karage, and this is published by Square Enix, and it is rated T. This is actually the first time I'm hauling a volume of the Apothecary Diaries on my channel. I have volumes one through four in a right stuff haul, and if everything works as planned, I should be filming that haul after this one. <laughs> I don't know a whole lot about the Apothecary Diaries, except that it's a historical romance mystery series about a woman who's enslaved by a Chinese emperor and works as an apothecary in his palace. I think she ends up using her skills to solve mysteries and make discoveries, which sounds really cool. Ever since reading A Bride's Story, I've been looking for more historical manga series and this has been recommended to me in the comments multiple times. Also, I love the art. I think it's breathtaking and the covers are gorgeous. Fingers crossed that I'm able to haul the other books soon. I can't wait to see all of them together on the shelf. And then we have Welcome Back Alice. We have volume one. And then we have volume two. And we also have volume three. <laughs> I feel like I've been opening these packages like very angrily, like I'm taking out frustrations or something. <laughs> Volume three. Oh, it's so pretty. So Welcome Back Alice is written by Shuzo Shimi. It is published by Kodansha and it's definitely rated is it rated 16 plus or mature? It's only rated 16 plus. That's a little surprising actually. So Welcome Back Alice is another manga that I bought online and wanted to haul right away. I believe the narrative revolves around reunite in high school, but one of the friends has started presenting as a girl and begins manipulating their friends. I believe this is a psychological drama, which isn't surprising because it's by Oshimi Sensei, but I was surprised to see it getting mixed reviews on Goodreads. It sounds like a lot of people are torn regarding the LGBTQ plus representation, so that's very interesting. I see a lot of people comparing this series to Oshimi Sensei's other work, Flowers of Evil, which I haven't read yet. I really need to dedicate some time to reading Shuza Oshimi's works. I think I have a couple volumes of Inside Mari to haul as well. 
So I'm thinking I need to binge some Shuza Oshimi. <laughs> but yeah, really looking forward to checking this out and see what's going on. See what the tea is. <laughs> okay, so our bag is empty, but we still have one more manga to unbox and I kind of left well besides Living Room Matsu Nagasan this is the second book that I've been most excited to unbox. I see the spine. It's wrapped in plastic. That's how you know it's good. Oh ah, it's so beautiful. So this is volume six of My Dress Up Darling. This is written by Shinichi Fukuda. It is rated mature, definitely, and it is published by Square Enix. If you watched my latest vlog, you know that I read volumes one through five of My Dress Up Darling on Jordaline's recommendation and oh my gosh, it was such a remarkable experience. <laughs> I love this series so much. It even got five stars from me and I couldn't believe my luck when I saw that volume six was releasing right away. My Dress Up Darling is a light, etchy rom-com series about a boy who aspires to becoming a doll artisan. And he's approached by a very trendy and popular girl who'd like for him to sew her cosplay outfit. It's hilarious and wholesome and shares some really beautiful messages. Also, my husband and I started watching the anime together and it's a riot. <laughs> I highly recommend both the anime and the manga if you haven't seen or read them. And that's all the manga I'm hauling today. I'd love to know what you guys have hauled recently or if you recommend any of the manga I talked about. If you're interested in watching more videos from me, you can check out my end card where I'll have links to my most recent videos. I hope you all have a magnificent day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!